uh, you have you have a DSP in biotechnology from Nigeria. People might not really invest in my doctoral program um, next month in the US, and I was actually excited to be part of this program today because you know. I just like the moderator had mentioned earlier, so many Nigerians are more interested in um, going to Europe or America and then you keep trying and trying and trying and years are going and at the end of the day you just get frustrated and maybe just go to one state university in Nigeria and just do your, your graduate program and save yourself the stress. You know, so many persons have been frustrated. And I'm sure that if me in particular, if I had also not given Taiwan a consideration, I probably would have also been in the in the multitude of people who have been trying for Europe and um, the US. But then I wouldn't have been able to, you know, get a platform upon which I'm able to get the doctoral um, position in the US. So. I just want to, in just a um, just few minutes, you know, share some of my experiences, which I think would be also important for some people, because um, I believe that, you know, when you, from my experience and observation so far, I have seen that when you are trying to apply to those places in Europe uh, or even in the US, you know, with a, with a degree from Nigeria, sometimes you might not be successful because there are also other Nigerians who have you know, acquired their first degree from very prestigious universities all over the world, vying for the same scholarship position. Especially, I mean, when you when you are interested in, in a scholarship um, opportunity, of course, if you if you want to go train yourself, uh, you are actually free to do that. You know. Um, the moderator and other colleagues of mine here would give more details to other aspects of this, but then I just want to share an overall experience that I have had um, coming here. I came to Taiwan with the, 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 the Ministry of Education um, scholarship. It's called the MOE scholarship. Uh, it's a Taiwan government scholarship. I got that scholarship in 2020. and. I came here in October, October of 2020. I came here to pursue a master's program in um, nanomedicine and medical engineering, which I have successfully concluded, like I have mentioned before. And so, um, and within that 2020 till now, um, I must say that my background here in Taiwan actually gave me um, the platform, you know, a very solid platform to obtain a doctoral position in the US. Now, the reason why I say that Taiwan gave me that platform is because I know so many people who send cold emails to professors um, from Nigeria and they don't get responses. You know, they don't get responses because when the, when the professor probably opens the email and see where you are coming from and they say, oh, it's an Nigerian university, uh, they just neglect it, right? You know, but I sent emails, some cold emails to some professors, and almost all the emails I sent, I got responses. Some of them I got responses almost immediately. You know, others I got responses later on. But all the emails I sent, and with my CV and credentials and you know, the work I have done here in Taiwan, I, I get responses from those professors. So, you see, it's, I, I said it is like a platform. So it gave me the idea that the place is good. The education here is actually um, valued um, globally. It's valued because the moment you 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 present that you are you actually got a master's degree or you have a research experience um, from here, it actually beefs up whatever degree you are coming from. You know you are, you are holding from Nigeria. Okay, so um, compared to the system of education which we have in Nigeria, the, the, the Taiwan educational system is really good, it's really good, and I must mention that, that um, here, education is basically research focused, compared to, um, here's here, you write exams, you, 
you, you do quite a lot of presentations, but it's just like your basic, um, your basic uh, focus is on research. So if you're someone who is interested in using your hands, using your brain, um, who is interested in lab work, who is interested in doing field work, you are interested in, you know, not just the theory that, that, you know, compared to what we have in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we do most of theories and we don't even have labs to do practical work experience. And that is why when you say you are a biotechnologist, uh, you, have a, you have a BSc in biotechnology from Nigeria, people might not really value you because they know that you don't have those equipment there. They know, even if you write that you do this kind of essay, you do this kind of experience, you have this experience, they might think you are lying because they know that Nigeria as it is, it's not really like that developed to have those equipment. And we ourselves, we won't lie to ourselves. Some of the science, um, um, the labs are not even functional. Some of us, when we did the medical school or do whatever thing we do, you see that even to, to report experiments, just for for supply whatever, just submit and you pass, you know, just move on. But here, you know, they have the they have the, the science, they have the technology, they have the manpower, they have people. So when you say you have this degree and you have this experience, people value you. They know that you are actually sound in that area. So like I said, here, my experience, but basically, research is central to whatever you do here. And that is the reason why by the time you finish your program, you might have publications, which might not be possible if you are if you are probably studying in a place like Nigeria. And not just publication. Here we, we value publications in good impact factor journals. Not just just publish some of us there will publish paper in 0 0.1, you know, impact factor 0, 0.0, some 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 of the journals you say you even publish your papers are impact factorless. I don't know if there's any word like that. So there are no there is no impact factor but then when you when you when you are applying to the places like US, you are you are you are telling them we have this publication, they have a publication. Outside here, people just Google up the journal. They just open up the journal to see what kind of journal is that. So people are engineering, we know the best journals in engineering. So when you say you publish something and you're we just check the journal and it's zero point something and, and just like this is useless because I mean you 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 just wasted your time, right? And that is why some of us might have not been getting good um, responses when you are applying to places like US. With all those your publications you are putting on your CV, no one is answering you, right? But here, within the two years I did my master's program, I um, I published four four papers. Um, in international journals, and this was possible because, like I said, the work here is basically research-oriented. So you find yourself collaborating, you find yourself in the midst of researchers, you find yourself, you know, doing um, a lot of stuff. Even my master's thesis was recently published in Journal of Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering, which, like I, I told you, everything you do is centered on research. So if you are the kind of person who is interested in research, I think Taiwan will be um, a good place for you. And also, um, another thing I also want to mention is that um, um, when you are trying to apply for higher degrees, in, in case you want to do a PhD, right, um, instead of you're wasting your time, because I mean, I, I saw that my applying to Taiwan was really was really easy. Like it's like the easiest application I've ever made. It was like the easiest application I ever made. I just applied, I applied for the scholarship and then I got the admission. It was very easy. You know, I didn't have to queue and struggle with a bunch of people like all these um all these kind of prestigious scholarships that people apply for Chevening and you know you have thousands of people who apply for it and you don't even get it. Here, I applied directly to the university. I got the university scholarship. I also got the MOE scholarship. I had to decide which one to choose, you know, while coming here. And so um, I see that being here actually, like I mentioned earlier, gave me the platform. So the publications I have, the, the, the research experience I also have acquired over the years, when I was writing the code email, when I was preparing my CV to send to the professors, I put everything there. I'm telling you, in fact, there was one of the schools, especially this University of Illinois, I emailed the professor. I
now and within the next one hour i got a response i got a schedule for an interview and we talked and it was amazing so because they just quickly look at your research experience that's what everyone looks at and they look at that and they see that you have experience but then if you are someone who you prefer theory i think you should probably go to the uk you know or where mm-hmm. you go yeah just go there and read book and practice and pass actually but if you are really interested in um, in research, which is what I'm interested in, it's also good. And another, finally, another, another, another thing I want to mention is that unlike, because when you look at Nigerian education system, um, you see that most times, if you apply, if you finish your bachelor's degree in a field, they insist that you do your master's in the same field. You know, they will tell you um, if you're, you're, you're for you to have a, for you to do a master's program here, you must have this um, background. But I see that here in Taiwan, I was able to change field. Um, my original background is medical imaging, radiography, but then I was interested in engineering aspects of medicine. And when I came here, I was able to um, write a good statement of purpose and change field, right? So now I'm also going to the U.S. to do my, my, master, my PhD in bioengineering. So here it gives you an opportunity to actually switch fields. You know, although it is not, um, one of the, the, the downsides to that is that if you do, if, if you do a, a graduate program in a field that you already have a strong background in, you don't really struggle here. But then for me, I, ha- I really had to struggle a lot because I had to teach myself how to read a lot. I had to, you know, do extra work because I don't have like an engineering, sound engineering background. So, but then if you want to switch fields, I see that it's very easy here. I can study something like biochemistry in Nigeria and do a master's in pharmacology here, if you can write a good SOP. I can do something like, in fact, I think I, I, I know someone who did a, a, a master's program in medicine, uh, in, in Taipei Medical University, we have um, a master's program in medicine. Um, he, he is a bio, bio, biochemistry background guy, but then he was able to secure um, a master's position in medicine so he, so you can actually switch do fields you know, change fields whatever you want to do um if you if you are willing to do the work right so that is also another thing so i'm just giving just like holistic um, um, um uh, stuff and then finally i also want to mention something that i think that is very very um critical which is that here you teach yourself mostly. Like I said, most of the professors here are focused on research. So most of the times, they're just coming to class to just tell you what you should know, and then they go. So if you really want to learn, you have to teach yourself. Like, when I say 80% of the things I know, um, theoretically, while I did my master's here, I had to like sit down to read by myself. I have to, you know, while you read papers, while you do your seminars, you read papers, you teach yourself, because um, there is always this, that you, you don't have that, like I said, you don't have that system where you have to converse, where you have to ask questions, you know, a lot of questions and people are talking and all that. So what the professors basically do is to tell you, look at what we're going to discuss, and they just tell you overview about it, and then you go, um, you go and and do the other work. I mean, even if you decide not to do the other work, most people just, after the classes, they go back to the lab. Because what is, yeah. from my experience, what, um, what forms a strong, um, what I say, uh, evidence that you are doing well is your being able to, to publish in good paper. So like here, you have opportunity to join other research teams. There are so many research teams going I know, everywhere. So you can join people, you can collaborate with people and write good papers. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to conclude here because every other thing my, my, my colleagues are going to talk about that. Um, for me, I see that this whole experience culminated into my being able to secure a doctoral position in the US with full funding. Like I got, I got like five years funding um, and even like some other stuff that you know were included in the whole arrangement now that would not have been possible if I didn't come here 
that would not have been possible if I was probably joining the queue of people sending cold emails, session upon session upon session upon session. I just came here, you know, did the masters, and then last year, like after the first year, I started applying for the for the the PhD, and then I got the position. So um, I just want to end by saying that sometimes if you do not have the basic information you you need if you do not have the basic information you might actually keep running around in circles whereas and i mean and time will keep going especially for people who are interested in you know i mean it's not just about going abroad and just going to take pictures or um going to study in a good place i mean there is this there is this um when i say fulfillment you know you get when you study abroad, because you get to meet other people from different parts of the world. You get to have a different pattern of understanding. You, the way you understand things will completely be different. You see all these things people are saying, uh, you have to write the SOP this way, you have to do this, they, you know, they tell you a lot, of, a lot of things. I mean, by the time you finish, I mean, at least the master's program abroad, you will see that, you know, naturally you will develop those skills of, of, of doing things for yourself of you know of being excellent it, it just comes naturally so um i just want to welcome every other person that has joined us lately and um, while i hand over to the moderator i i i just believe that with this few points that i've shared to you these are just like my overall um experience every other intricacy uh my other colleagues they would talk about them but then uh for those of you who are interested in coming here, I just want to say it's a nice place. I mean, I, I, it was like a platform for me to be where I am today. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck. Um, at least you've heard from him. And um, but good luck. I, I would want you to share a particular experience because I, I was hoping you would mention which has to do with the ability to... Um, also have courses done from other fields despite being in a specific field over here because it is one of the things that I find very, very interesting in Taiwan. You could be doing your master's in pharmacy, but you can go to public health and and offer their courses. You can even go to medicine and offer their courses. As long as that course is something that you really want to do, it is your choice to make. So maybe yes, you can just throw a, uh, more light on that. Yes, um, you know, just like I, I know, whenever I, I say things, I always compare with the system we have in Nigeria because I did my first degree from University of Calabar. So, in University of Calabar, I don't know about every other universities. In University of Calabar, um, the courses you are going to take for every semester has already been outlined, yeah. and. You, you dare not take something else because if you take something else, they probably won't calculate it with the CGPA or it becomes, I don't know, you, you have problem. They'll tell you, you didn't take this course, go, go take it, right? But here, you just have like a minimum credit you're supposed to take for a semester and then you can decide based on your interest, right? Based on your interest, you can, you can go to any place, any department of your choice, you know, because I could remember that for me, I even went to um, language. I did something on bioethics from one. I don't even know the name of the department, but I just saw the stuff on bioethics and it interested me. I did some courses from language, uh, the language uh, uh, unit of the, 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 uh, of the school. Uh, I did some Chinese programs from there. Um, I, I know that, I mean, like, you can actually select courses from from different departments. So if you are someone who is interested in a particular field and you know that there are other um, topics that you are you are really, really interested in, you can just go around the school and pick up those topics as long as it doesn't exceed the credit unit for that particular semester. So I think that is one thing that is really interesting here compared to what, like I said, I had in the University of Calabar where everything is already streamlined and you must do what has been stated. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck. Um, I I guess uh, you all heard it. Uh, it's already okay. We still have uh, uh, Aman and Amandeep. Welcome. 
uh, Amandeep uh, is my colleague uh, in the uh, School of Pharmacy at Taipei Medical University. He he is a PhD student, and um, somewhat Amandeep is my boss. So I would want he's an Indian by the way, not a Nigerian. So I wanted not just for you to be able to hear testimonials from those of us from Nigeria, but also for you to be able to hear the um, the experience from other persons from other places. I also have um, um, a colleague of mine who, who is from US. He, in, in fact, he finished his master's a long time ago, but he didn't want to like start off with PhD. He wanted to work and he stayed behind. So he will come up very soon and probably also talk about his experience. But right now, I would want um, Amandeep to share his experience. Hello, Aman. Hello, hi. Hi, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Everyone can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. And uh, congratulations to you and good luck. You are both making, you know, very uh, efforts to, you know, guide the students of Nigeria regarding the Taiwan and applications all over the world. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the congratulations. And nice to see you good luck in this meeting as well. I know good luck since we both, you know, joined the things. Uh, we both joined the team at the same time and we were dormant. And we and Rafael are working together, so it, we are kind of working. So here I am talking about uh, my experience uh, about the Taiwan. So I just want to talk about the two perspectives. One is research and regarding the uh, institutional facilities. And second is about the living standard of the Taiwan, that what, what kind of living situations in the Taiwan. So the first, if uh, I talk about the research in my uh, experience, uh, the Taiwan's most of the universities are, you know, well equipped with the research facilities. As uh, me and Rafael, we are working and most of the labs are dedicated towards the new research. So we all are trying to, you know, find the solutions of some problem which are very serious and they need a serious kind of attention. So if currently we talk about a little bit about our research, so we are working on the some of the deadliest cancers type, just like glioblastoma and breast cancer. So we are trying to make some solutions for that one. So I also encourage to the young uh, people. So you can also join our team or the some other university as well uh, in Taiwan. So you will help to find a good solutions or the better solutions and your opinion also matter in the research because everyone has their different opinion in research. So I encourage all of you to uh, go ahead and fill the applications form and welcome to Taiwan and to work on the uh, top kind of research which is going on the worldwide. The second thing I want to uh, just discuss with you is about the how the life is in Taiwan. Because with your research, the how is the living standard of that country that is also matters. In, so in my opinion, Taiwan is a you know very friendly country and people are so friendly you can even it is a very safe country if you want to go outside at 12 to 4 anytime you can roam around very easily and the best thing is the convenience store the convenience stores are so uh, convenient as you, the name suggests it's so convenient they some of the stores are open for 24 7. so i think that is a good uh, friendly thing for the students so if you feel hungry or if you want something so you can go outside and roam around and have something and just uh, and you can also focus on your work. Yeah. Uh, hello, hello? Aman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Aman, for sharing your experience. Um, it's uh, I believe that uh, you your contribution would go a long way to um, let uh, I would refer to them as my people because. Uh, that is where I am coming from. So we we really appreciate and thanks for your time and um, and um, for because I know he's a very busy guy and for taking your time to speak to us, we really appreciate. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and congratulations, you both. You are making a very you know good work that 
will very really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you are guiding all the young people of your country as well. Thank you, uh, Aman. Before you go, I would um, let me ask them. We will come back to you. Good luck because there are some questions for you. So, uh, does anyone have any question for uh, Mr. Aman? Okay, I, I guess nobody does. So, thank you very much, Aman, for your time. We appreciate it. Thank, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, all right. So, uh, moving on, uh, I, I can see some questions for um, Mr. Goodluck. So, Goodluck, I know you can also see those questions. Someone, um, Mr. Bakere Moses, is asking a question. He said, thanks for organizing this meeting. I do appreciate I would love to ask Mr. Goodluck a question. You talked about those interested in research to reconsider Taiwan. What of those that have lots of professional experience as pertaining to work and not research experience from school? I don't have any published paper so far, but I have. I am interested in research programs in environment. I want to ask my chances of getting admission in Taiwan schools with no research papers. Also, my chances of getting the research scholarship. Okay. Okay, and well, thank you for the, the question. Um, I must say that, like I said, Taiwan is really special to me because when I came here, um, before I came here, I actually worked for five years. I worked for five years as um, a diagnostic radiographer in Nigeria in the Kitty State. Um, all I had, after I graduated from the university, all I had was clinical experience, work experience, basically. I did not have any published paper. In essence, paperless. So that I was I was paperless. <laughs> <laughs> I was paperless. So when I when I when I when I was applying, when I was applying, um, I wrote my C V and my C V was basically my my work experience. That was what was there. I didn't have to write what was not there. You don't need really actually I mean, I am I am a, a classical example that you can always refer to. I did not come here with any paper. I didn't have any publication. All the publications I have so far, I got them here while I started the master's program. So I did not have any paper before I, I came here. So you should know that if you want to prepare your CV for admissions, just write your work experience. In fact, most of the courses, like I told you, here is basically research based. If they are even interested in the skills you have than like the papers or whatever that you have published, although they might be important. So please, um, when you're writing your CV, just focus on those useful skills that you think the professor that you're going to join is going to benefit from, right? If you are a programmer or there are like key skills that, you know, you use at work, like you say you do stuff on the environment, I'm sure there are like very good skills you might have so far while you are working professionally. You can put them there. I'm sure those things will captivate them because they will be doing research that will involve those things and they will need you. They will see this person is useful, right? So to answer your question, yes, you don't need the paper to get um, admitted here. You don't need to have published any paper compared to what you might have in the US, right? Yeah, but um, also getting the scholarship once you are admitted, I, mean, I think the moment you get admitted, you always there is always yeah, I'm, no, of, I'm I'm definitely going to talk about that. So yeah, maybe so I just, think uh, he's going to talk about that yeah. about the admission and the scholarship that I have. But, but to answer your first question, you don't actually need paper. I came here paperless, and now I'm paperful. Yeah, you're paperful in <laughs> high impact factor journals. We're not talking <laughs> about we're not talking about impact factor journals. <laughs> Well, that, that are less than five, <laughs> like not less than five. Just few days ago, I had an impact journal publication with an impact factor of eight point six seven five or something like that. So mm -hmm. I never expected that to come that way, but it did. So basically, that's it. So uh, Samuel, I I see your question. Uh, it's going to be addressed when I'll be speaking on the uh, graduate application and also the graduate uh, requirements. Um, then Chisom Neoma, if you don't have up to two years work experiences, do you stand? Yes, you do. You do stand a chance of um, of of getting admission and also even stand a chance of getting a scholarship. 
So uh, some of us just came here immediately after our service. So the only thing that was on our CV was on the fact that we did our NYSC and uh, we also had some things that we did as undergraduates, which you could just refer as just a skill building. So yes, Norma, you, you can, you stand a chance. So, but we will address all these when we, when we talk about the aspect of uh, the uh, scholarship applications and all. So, um, I, was, I still have, what's the time now? Okay. I still have other colleagues of mine that will be speaking. Um, Ibrahim? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, okay, Ibrahim, please, uh, uh, could you share yours now? Your experience and some other things yeah. you could say. Okay, oh. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, you're always welcome. And I, I think I asked um, a lot of people to join and I can see some of them. Um, this is very interesting. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I think my experience is somewhat similar to that of um, good luck. So, <laughs> that is, um, yeah, that is very, very interesting. Actually, like he said, um, instead, of, instead of you to waste your time and energy, um, waiting for a very long queue that you have to go to Europe, you have to go to USA, you have to go to whatever, blah, blah. I think you, if you give a Taiwan a try, I think it was it. Because like I always say, when it comes to research, when it comes to research, the only thing that matters is um, research equipment, um, scientists, and whatsoever. I think the only difference between um, um, Taiwan and the uh, USA, Europe, and uh, UK, and whatsoever that uh, people are hunting always is the environment. But when it comes to actual equipment, we are everywhere in the same place. When it comes to equipment, I think we are almost in the same place. We have uh, the same equipment, we run the same analysis, we run the same everything. So I think I really uh, find it very, very, very comfortable when I find myself in Taiwan. And like you always said, um, you can always change the style of study. Uh, like for me, it's just like example. When I came to Taiwan, when I my undergraduate degree was in human anatomy, but uh, when I joined the CMU China Medical University in Taiwan City in Taiwan, I moved to biomedical sciences. So in biomedical sciences, it's a very broad area. So of course, I need to specialize. I need to take a few courses. So my area of specialty is in cancer biology, which is, um, I think, is somewhat impossible in Nigeria from anatomy to move to cancer biology. Yeah. It's somewhat impossible in Nigeria. And like what you can say, the kind of research um, skills that you will develop actually is um, something uh, something very, very interesting and something that you'll be very proud of. Because uh, every single day when I wake up in the morning or I wake up in the evening, I check my email or I check website. And if you have seen some adverts, where I fall and good luck and very much where they can say that as a graduate or as a student, as a master's degree student from Taiwan, whenever you see a job advert in the UK, in Europe, in USA, everywhere in the world, especially for strong people's work, I'm not saying about PhD people's work, they will ask you more about political biology. Techniques such as Western blood, PCR, multiple process, automatic, advanced. Sometimes you will even ask you if you don't have advanced skills such as process, automatic, they will train you. And I will laugh and say, ha, fortunately, I already have the process, automatic skills already. I know how to do it. I came out of Spain in Taiwan. While in other countries, they are even telling you that they are willing to train you for that. While in Taiwan, you already have that. So I think uh, Taiwan is a very good oriented environment, very deep research oriented environment and if you're looking for a significant and very good research experience, I think you have to a very good way to consider Taiwan, either for your master's degree, either for your PhD degree, or you may even come as a postdoc or as a first assistant, it all doesn't matter. Like I mean you can go at one level. But since you are thinking about um, graduate school we will limit ourselves to master's degree and the PhD degree. And of course, the application process is always um, very easy and straightforward. There is no difficulties. Even the ASS exam, GRE, they are almost not occurring in Taiwan. And uh, also, the scholarship application process is simple. 
simple easy and straightforward for the cost. The competitive would not as uncompetitive as the global north or the global whatever. It's not as competitive as that. But of course it's competitive and we need to write a very good compelling essay. So we can get the scholarship and then like me I'm also an MOE scholarship taken. And all I can say is um, in overall my experience has been very good and has been very interesting with Taiwan and uh, with Taiwanese culture, especially with the language. This is why I'm not always problem, but at least to an extent, uh, I can speak language now. So. <laughs> Me how? How? You can speak the way. Yeah, that is the thing. Okay. So it's a very really interesting thing to learn Chinese because Chinese is one of the primary languages now in the world and uh, it's a very powerful language. It's very, very, very powerful more than the education. And of course, we will get a very sound education and we will be studying in one of the leading universities. I think the Chinese universities are always on top most universities in the world. Whenever you check the government in the universities, we will see that one university is always at the top. I always at the top. I promise you that. Like, I know my university is the fifth best university in Asia. So, this is something huge. So, I think um, if you are looking at the global ranking or you are looking at both, especially if you are a site oriented individual and if you are looking for such excellence and development, I think we should also consider Taiwan. And also, as well, if you want to consider the prospect of work or whatever, post graduation visa, post graduate studies visa, you should also as well consider Taiwan because they also have, they are also very good at that. I think you have one year extension of your visa, not too right, but then you completed your studies in Taiwan, you need to start to go and work. So, I mean, in many aspects, in many aspects, one is very good for you to study. So, educationally, culturally, and potentially uh, scientifically, yeah. science, I think, is top notch. Yeah, top notch. We get the skills, we get the good science training, and everything. So, thank you very much for listening to me, and this is all that I can tell you guys. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. Uh, like I said, I, I came with him to Taiwan uh, under the same scholarship, MOE Taiwan Government Scholarship. And um, I, by God's grace, we, we will be finishing the program together at, uh, at the same time. So, um, Samuel Edjo, your question about uh, working, of course, like I said, this is a platform that we, we have uh, kind of assembled to be able to answer a lot of questions. In fact, the easiest way for you to work over here in Taiwan is to become a student. And um, though if you are an MOE recipient, you would not be able to you would not be able to work outside your institution. But if you're not an MOE scholarship recipient or a, a government scholarship recipient, you're always free to work outside once you get your working permit. So the, so many of us that are not working outside are probably those of us who are under the MOE scholarship or the government scholarship. But once you're not, if you have an institution scholarship, you're always free as long as you get your working permit. So yes, you can. So um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, so I'm expecting someone to join us. Um, Mandy? Shashwa? Okay, I guess um, the, it's not the person I, I thought maybe would be joining us that actually joined. So uh, basically, um, around five. Okay, that should be around. Um, yeah, around about five five minutes or so to to say, uh, six. O sorry, to eleven o'clock your time. Uh, I would also have um, a colleague uh, of mine who is from the U.S. that came here to study, to also share his experience. But before then, I would love to share uh, a slide and maybe comments on speaking on the 
uh, studying in Taiwan and um, okay so I'm going to share a slide with you guys so can can this can you guys see this can you see the slide yes, <laughs> Huh? Yes. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So, uh, my name is Rafael Onuku, and I'm an MOE Taiwan Government Scholar, and um, also a graduate student of the School of Pharmacy, Taipei Medical University. And um, this, uh, we, I believe, I and Ibrahim, we just probably concluded our first year of our master's program. So, um, now I want to talk about the eligibility. This is just going to be like a very simple uh, conversation. Basically, maybe we might even finish before the, the time that we slated. So eligibility here, we are talking about you being able to um, you being able to tell yourself that you're eligible to apply for admission in Taiwan and also eligible to apply for scholarship in Taiwan. It's all dependent on you as well as the requirements from the institution you're trying to apply. So it is important that you check very well and discover if you are eligible to apply. So then when you discover that you're eligible to apply, the second thing is for you to find the, um, the, the university, the right university and the right program of interest. So what course do you want to study? What is the reason why you want to study that course? and um, your interest basically so you have to figure that out and once you have done that the next thing that you have to do um so is someone raising hand or okay okay so the next thing you have to do is to plan hello where is that coming from okay so the next thing that you have to do is to plan your budget. Now, why did I use the word, the, 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 this, uh, this uh, title? The reason why I use this title is because some persons might be willing to even see themselves through the universities here in Taiwan. So now, um, if, you are, if you have such an interest, then I, I don't think you're really going to have much problems. So... So you have to plan your budget. Then on a second note, uh, you can try out the Taiwan government scholarships and as well the scholarships in the private sectors here in Taiwan. Now, the official currency that is being used in Taiwan is the new Taiwan dollar. I think the equivalent uh, or the exchange rate between that and our Nigerian currency is uh, about one new Taiwan dollar is about 15 Naira. So it might not look... To, it might not be too small. Uh, is that correct? It might not be too big. Uh, maybe when you say one naira, one new Taiwan dollar is equal to fifteen naira. But when you start dealing with huge, uh, huge amounts, you will understand that. So it is. So uh, that is the currency that is being used here in Taiwan. So there are so many scholarships that you can apply for. The ones I I actually outlined here. Are the ones that possibly you could apply for or you could be qualified to apply for. So the first one is the Taiwan Government Scholarship. The second one is the How You Enrichment Scholarship. And the third one is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Taiwan Scholarship. Now, these three are the major Taiwan Government Scholarships that are available. And most of them have almost the same procedure of application, which is this that I outlined here. So now, in Taiwan, applying for your scholarship, for the government scholarship, and applying for admission is done separately. So despite the fact that when you apply for admission, some schools, like my school, when you apply for admission, you will be considered for a scholarship automatically, the school scholarship, which can come in three forms, type A, type B, and type C. So the type A is the school will give you they will, 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 will take care of your, your tuition as well as give you a stipend. Type B, I think the school will take care of your tuition, but you will have to take care of your stipend. 
thereby that is when you're now fully qualified to work you can even uh request from you uh, once you're once you're once you have stayed up to uh i think i've forgotten the the number of times uh, the number of months you could stay then you okay once you get your once you get your resident permit which is immediately you come to taiwan you have to stay for a, a, a minimum of uh, 15 days then afterwards you can apply for your alien residence uh, permit once you get your alien residence permit you can apply for job outside the campus so you can work and school at the same time so but uh, that is when you're not under the government scholarships remember so you have to note that the applications for the scholar government scholarship and that of the of the, and that of the the institution is different so first of all you have to send the application to the local republic of china overseas mission which is the the taiwan embassy it's in lagos the taiwan embassy in lagos covers all the all, all, all um, take care of all the west african countries so we are even lucky that it is very close to us so when you apply when you submit your your, your application there most times the application commences early uh, early of the next year before then you must have already applied for admission so most applications here in taiwan commences that's for the fall application where they take international students commences around them um, commences around okay 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 i'll pause right now and uh, allow uh, justin to share his experience he just came in and i know he's very busy so uh justin you're welcome hello okay Justin, we can't hear you. I think you're you're muted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you very much for coming. Hey, Robert, thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. How's, How's everybody, everybody doing? Yeah, everyone's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess everyone is okay. So thank you very much. Um I, I was actually telling them that I've got uh, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> the chief. <laughs> I can see you. You came early. So, um, so please, Justin, uh, without wasting much of your time, I would want you to share your experience because Justin has, he finished his program a long time ago. So he's lived in Taiwan for a very long time. But I wanted him to share his experience with you. For those of you asking, can you work while you're in Taiwan? Even when you're done with schooling, you can work as long as you can work because Taiwan actually needs people to come here and work. So thank you very much, Justin. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. problem. I, uh, I came here in uh, 2009, and I studied at Ming Chuan University, M-I-N-G-C-H-U-A-N, Ming Chuan. And um, I, I didn't come with a scholarship, but I know a lot of people come with scholarships. And if you come with a scholarship, I, uh, from my knowledge, I think uh, you're not able to work for the, the duration of your, your, um, your time as a student. But... Um, Recently, Recently, I got, I got my APRC, which means that I'm, I'm pretty much like a, a uh, pretty much a Taiwanese citizen, citizen uh, which means I have no, uh, I have no limitations. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, uh, Justin, please, can you unmute? Someone just came in and I had to mute everyone. Uh, okay, just, uh, hey. uh, okay, yeah, continue, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so I just recently got my APRC, which means that I don't have um, I don't have any regulations or restrictions as far as what I do as a job, but I just don't have uh, voting privileges. But uh, when I got my APRC, uh, they have a new law here. Well, not a new law, but a new uh, program. I think it's called like a gold card. And so Taiwan is really trying to find people with specific jobs to come into Taiwan and work and, and uh, they're, they're, they're trying, trying to they're trying, trying to outsource, outsource all, all these jobs. They're trying to bring them in, you know. And it's it's, it's a beautiful place. I so I I, I, I came here with almost no knowledge whatsoever of the country. country. And my, my first year here, I just you know I got to know that uh, everyone speaks Mandarin Chinese. Which is if you come here, uh, you'll be in the environment. Environment, you'll, you'll pick it up really easily. Um, you just gotta have an open mind, and people here are extremely friendly. And so, upon my second year here in Taiwan, I discovered that there was a Aborigines. 
They're going to be in Taiwan. Taiwan. There's 16 recognized tribes. tribes. So it, it, it was almost like, like uh, so, 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 so like, you know, when I first came here, I had no idea what Taiwan, Taiwan was. It's a small little island. island. You know, you think, yeah, I, would I would see this thing in like a few months, months be finished with it. No. 16 recognized tribes who speak different languages from Chinese. They all speak Chinese, but they also have their own languages. And there's three dialects of Chinese here. So the island just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's full of culture and it's full of uh, adventure. And it's full of opportunities. So I, I highly recommend Taiwan for studies. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your time that you took to speak to us and, uh, and also for sharing your cultural experience. That is so nice. I, I Thank you so much. Um, uh, no problem. And also, if you come here, uh, your Chinese is good enough, there's a huge chance that you could be on TV. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to get, Mr. I'm trying to get Mr. Raphael to get on TV here. You uh, just got to get that Chinese going. I don't have him on. No, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Justin. Uh, let me um, move on to Paul. Uh, he also wants to talk to us. Paul, I think you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself? Hi. Yeah, Hi, yeah. Thank, thank you. Paul, uh, Paul is a Taiwanese. So I also yes. wanted you to have an experience of someone from Taiwan talk to you. Um, these guys are friendly, like every one of us could tell you the Taiwanese are friendly people and yes. this is a very lovely place. So uh, please, um, Mr. Paul, could you could you just share something with us? No, no problem. problem. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, my, 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 my young brother, Raphael. Raphael. Actually, Raphael, 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 Raphael is my, my, my classmate and we have, have the same, same class. class. And, and I, 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 I am Taiwanese. Raphael asked ask me to uh, share, share my experience for everyone. First, I want to I want to share you that the Taiwan Thai Thai is a small island. But everything is very nice. And the people friendly just, just like me. You can ask Raphael. Everything, everything is good. And the Taiwan, Taiwan is very beautiful everywhere. Every place is very, very beautiful. And, and the if you and, and the place keep Taiwan a change when you apply to, to uh, even to United, United States or you even apply to England, please apply to Taiwan, Taiwan too, and then you can make a final decision after you to check everything first. first. And, and I know I, I only have five minutes, minutes. Uh, I, I can provide my FB on my, my line. line. You can ask me any question, and I am happy to reply you and any question. Rough or no, I always talking about anything. With a uh, FB message with a rough bill. And I, I, I want to let you know Taiwan, Taiwan is an international, com international country, and, the and the don't worry about, about anything. You can speak English in Taiwan, Taiwan not only Chinese language. English is okay, go to everywhere. And if, if you you can apply to TMU. TMU is my 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 school. Just the same like a Raphael, and I I can help you because I'm T I'm TMU college student, master master student until now the PhD second year. So I know my my TMU school is very very nice, and the and the professor also very very nice, and even student all you person very very well. Raphael can. Can, can, can show, show you everything, everything and share everything. So, so I, want I want to say, please apply Taiwan school if you have a have, have a more option in the near future. future. And, and you have, have you have, have any question before apply, please send the message for, for me. I'm very very happy to reply you because I know in your country in Taiwan have six hours different, right? Seven hours. Seven hours. Oh, seven, 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 seven. Okay, okay, okay. So, so if I, I can cannot reply you immediately, please, maybe I am in, in sleeping. I will, I will reply you when, when I wake up, up and immediately. Okay. okay? So, so I want, I want, to, I want to tell everyone, everyone please try, try to apply Taiwan. Taiwan. You, you will feel very, very good. good. And, and uh, anything, any, any you want to know, just just send me the message. Even to Rafi, I'll send to me. I'm very very happy. To send, send the, my, my as I know, send the answer, answer I will reply for you. you. Okay? 
Okay, thank you very much, uh, um, Mr. Paul. Uh, I really appreciate uh, for your time because I, I know no, very well that everyone is busy, uh, especially here in Taiwan. Everybody gets to be very busy. So I really appreciate you guys for your time. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we have a lot of people from my country who, who mm -hmm. tuned up to this event. And uh, I believe that they will definitely not uh, leave this event uh, without um, acquiring something from you. Um, okay, so um, maybe you can share your email um, with, with me, then I'll send it to them, or you can also share it within the chat box. It could be easier, okay, okay. whichever one. Okay, I, 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 I have one, 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 one more senior guest who share everyone. Okay. I, 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 I have a pharmacy, let's say with uh, my brother Rafael. Rafael. Yeah. And, and I, I also uh, uh, doing uh, skincare, skincare skincare business in, in, in all, all the world. world. So, so if you, you have interesting to call uh, uh, any to skincare, skincare skincare business, just, just come. I will share my experience for you and we can we out, out together, together and everything, okay? okay. Rafa, you know everything about, about me. About, about me, my skincare. Skin yeah. yeah. This is right? right? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. okay. No, no problem. problem. And, then, and, then, and then, Rafael, 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 I will provide you my uh, FB and uh, my, e my email and, and any anyone, anyone any, any question. Just, just as no, no problem. problem. Right. I'm very, very happy to reply. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paul. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Justin. Thanks for coming. I, I do appreciate it. No problem. It. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Have fun. Hope, Hope to see you in Taiwan, Taiwan one day. All right. Bye. Sure. Yeah. Can I take a picture? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. I've already taken a picture. I'll send to you. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um... Man, I'm getting in the chat box. Some people are not really patient with us, and I, I really don't know why. Because uh, um, maybe they they had to see this at uh, the uh, this advert um, uh, impromptu or something like that. We are coming, like we are taking this stage by stage. I wanted uh, my colleagues to actually share their experience, and also for you to be able to see for you to be able to see that. Uh, what we are saying is not that we are trying to, you know, paint anything or say something that doesn't exist. So that's why. So I'm going to proceed with what I was actually sharing uh, before now. So unless you want, we are busy here. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So Justin was sharing something. Uh, Ming Chuan University was my university was almost okay okay he was talking you know Justin was saying I think he came here and sponsored himself and all so he came from US and since then he's been here so I think he just mentioned about how much he pays per semester so let me just proceed with what I was um, sharing uh, earlier so um Okay, so you can, I guess, you can see, you can, you can see the slide now, right? Hello, everyone. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so as I was saying, um, the in terms of the scholarship, so these are the procedures to share the scholarship. So you, I mean, to the, the procedures to apply for the scholarship, and I've told you for the Taiwan government scholarship, you have to apply. Separately, you have to apply to institution, then you now apply for the government scholarship. But usually the application to the institution comes first. Most times it starts towards the end of the year, like for instance, around November or uh, September. Uh, um, yeah, around November, applications for admission have already uh, would have started in Taiwan. So you have to apply. Then the scholarship comes around, the Taiwan government is, adv uh, the advert comes up around March, February or March of, of the following year. So first of all, it's easier if you already have a kind of confirmation that you've been admitted for you to even apply for the Taiwan government scholarship. So, but that being said, uh, uh, you, uh, what, so one thing you have to also know is, okay, sorry. So one thing you have to also know is that um, 
sometimes interviews could be conducted for your admission to institution. Sometimes also for the scholarship, you could also be called for for interview uh, at the embassy. Then you you go for the interview and that's it. So basically, like what my colleague has said, uh, the, the application to Taiwan institution is very 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 simple. Like. It's one of the most easiest platform for you to apply. It's not complicated. And most times, some of, most of the schools do not even collect application fee from you. Like my institution, you don't need to pay any application fee. All you need to do is to sign up and, you know, submit the required documents. So now, so these are just the a kind of a, a short description of how to apply to the, this thing. So for the Taiwan government scholarship, you've got, um, uh, I'm going to bring up a kind of, I'm going to bring up the comparison of the various scholarships so that you can, you can see uh, for yourself. So just, um, okay. Okay. Um, I'm coming. All right, so you can, I believe you can, you can see this. So this is the, I'm comparing the various, uh, three, the three government scholarships that I just uh, showed you. Now this, how you enrichment scholarship is a language program. It's for you to come and learn the Chinese. This one is not for masters. It's more like a year program that you can come just for you to learn Chinese. But this MOE, and the MOFA scholarship are both for uh, masters and PhD. You can get this as for masters and PhD. Uh, as, as you can see here, MOE Taiwan scholarship is the best scholarship you can get over here in Taiwan because you get, for those in masters, you get paid 20,000 NTD per month. For those in, um, for those that are offering um, a PhD, you get paid 20,000 per month, but for bachelor, you get 15,000 NTD per month. So for those ones that are coming for one year language program, of which when you are done with this one year language program, sorry, while you're here, you could even apply for your master's in case you're someone who is interested in, 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 in kick, kicking off with uh, the next program. So they pay you 25,000 NTD per month for one year. So for MOFA uh, Taiwan uh, Government Scholarship, you get paid 30,000 uh, this year, NTD per month. Uh, and um, if there are other programs, I think there's other program where you get to pay 25,000. So you can just read up about this, uh, this thing. Then now, amongst all these scholarships, only MOE takes care of your school fees. They pay up to 40,000 NTD uh, each semester for your for your for your tuition. So if you calculate what forty thousand um, NTD is in in naira, let me just uh, maybe so that you get to see how much um, how much they, they they are willing to spend taking care of your fee is about okay. That's about. 556,448 in the, in the conversion I have right now. So let's just say 560,000 Naira. So that's why I say some persons can even take care of their tuition when they are here. Because I know a lot of people who are, who are spending a lot to school in private institutions in Nigeria. So if you, in case you really don't want to like, go for the whole scholarship or you're not able to get the whole scholarship and you really want to fund your schooling, you can as well apply and you're going to get more quality education over here. If you check most of the institutions of which I'm going to share with you, you will notice that most of them are highly ranked. If you check QS ranking or other rankings, you discover that so many Taiwan universities are highly ranked. So, um... So as I was saying, so if you compare the listing, so now scholarship period 
for that of the for that of the MOE, so you have to uh, apply. Okay, you the scholarship cover it begins September first and ends on August thirty first of the following year. So that is if you are. It's more like it looks as if it's more is renewable, but at the same time, those of us here knows that every year it just you know goes on and goes on. So basically, I think this is the uh, so the duration. So for bachelor. The scholarship can cover up to four years. For masters, it's two years. For PhD, it's four years. Then this one for the language program, it can go for two months for those who are just coming for summer term, three months, six months, but it does not exceed one year. That's why I say it's just a language program. So, but the good thing there is that if you get the language program, you can even call. I know someone amongst us that came here last year um, was on this language program because. She didn't need to come back to Nigeria to proceed to to commence for application for for masters. So in essence, in essence, I, I, somehow I I saw her documents at the embassy. She's already here. So now she has commenced her masters already. So if you come here with the language program of which, that's why I I of which for me I suggest that if you try this one, you can try as many options as you can. The most of you know, the most important thing is. If you're interested, you can. And for the MOE scholarship, it's not a mandatory that you must learn the language. I didn't learn the language. Ibrahim is not learning the language. It's optional. If you want to, you can. So for me, this semester, this forthcoming semester, I might decide to take up a course on, 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 on Chinese. It's my choice because of what, just like Ibrahim said, Chinese is like one of the world-recognized language right now. It's becoming recognized. Just the same way we speak English, but that's that's uh, that's something else for another day. So um, I've read it. Okay, I've already shared about this. So now you know the duration and like I said. So in terms, of, okay, look at this. Working and internship students can can apply for the working permit according to the regulations. So now these regulations we are talking about, uh, it does not cover for this for anybody who is on this government scholarship. Once you're on this government scholarship. You cannot apply for a working permit outside your institution. I'm working as a research assistant in my lab and getting paid extra money aside from my scholarship. This is within my institution. But once it's outside your, your the institution, then you cannot. Because of what you're, you have, like, basically one of the best scholarship that the country can offer. So why deny others who are probably training themselves in school or those who have partial scholarships from uh, getting that same opportunity outside? So I think maybe that is their consideration. So that being said, um, let me continue with... So, okay, let me continue with uh, what I was sharing. So now uh, we also have private sector scholarship. This is the only private scholarship, uh, private sector scholarship, Academia Sinica. The Academia Sinica is like a joint program between a firm and as well as institutions. So you can apply for this Academia uh, Sinica Taiwan uh, International uh, Graduate uh, Program. You can check it, you can more like browse it and see for yourself the requirements and everything that, what it takes for you to apply. But they have a wonderful program. Academia Sinica is one of the best research institutes here in Taiwan. So you can check it out. We have other scholarships like the Allied Study in Taiwan uh, and also the International Higher Education Scholarship Programs of Taiwan, ICDF. I don't think Nigerians um, have the eligibility for these two scholarships. So that is why I didn't want to uh, uh, throw more light on it. So so for the ad you have to check admission requirements. So now it is important for you to check the detailed information on the entry requirements and also deadlines for so many institutions. So different institutions have different uh, requirements. And um, I'm going to share with you all these, all these files I'm sharing right now. I'm definitely going to uh, share it with you guys um, at the end of this uh, event. So I'm going to share with you. Uh, so this was a compilation I made. This is on my Facebook the timeline. Basically, what I just did was copy and paste and just, you know, did formatting. So, this is a compilation I once made before now. 
telling everyone about so many schools in Taiwan, as well as what, as well as the 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 application when the application commences and the deadline and the links. So this is where this is my institution. Of course, I have to like place it first. So uh, application commences for fall because they take international students for fall. So I don't think they take international students for spring. So by application commences uh, in this thing um, um, around November. This was for those who will be kicking off with their programs this year. So, but now this is our discussion now is for those who are going to apply in uh, for their studies in Taiwan for next year. So this is the distance. So various schools, National Taiwan Normal University, you have when application commences around October, you see, so and ends around January. Then you have um, you have the National Sun Yat Sen University, and you have the you have these so so many institutions with various application uh, period. So you have to you have to uh, kind of uh, take your time and go through this or even make your own search. Like I said, um, I said somewhere here that, okay, so any information obtained here is just for educational purposes. I do not represent officially any of the schools listed below and I do not offer scholarships or admissions. So if you need more information regarding this, please visit their official websites and make contact or make your inquiries. They always reply, especially on social media, they always reply inquiries. So uh, you can also, um, for the government, for the scholarships, you, you can uh, apply into any of your profession, depending on what your school is offering. So, so that's that. So I'll commence with the uh, slide that I was initially sharing. Okay, so now, so that's that. So there are so many institutions. I'm also going to share with you a document that bears institutions that offer various programs squarely in English and institutions that might require you to do some language program before you commence. So, but uh, these things are like compiled institutions, especially for OMOE application. Okay, maybe I should just... Uh, I should just share it with you now so that you can see. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right, as you can see here, these are the list of universities or colleges providing degree program programs taught in English now for Taiwan scholarship recipients. So it's also very important if you're someone who who is not, I don't know what to say basically, but this is just the information I have for you. So now you have for this uh, Taipei National University of the Arts. So their master's is... They, they offer their masters in English. So if there are programs that you have to do in this school for PhD, then I offer more for bachelors. That means you have to like take some, some uh, distance. And I believe the reason why masters is in English is because you just have two years. For bachelors, you have like four years. For PhD, you have like four years or five years. So you have enough time to take the language program and learn. So this one offers PhD squarely in uh, some of the, you can see some of their programs. The programs that they offer squarely in English. So I would also uh, send you this so you can check if your program falls in any of the institution and if that is where you really want to go to, then you can apply. But I know most of the institutions in Taiwan offer their graduate studies program in English. So I would still share this document with you later on. So moving forward, so 
the common requirements that are required for you to that that are needed for you to apply to institutions in Taiwan are just the basic requirements that we all know. Your academic credentials, your degree certificate. Then if you're if you're still an undergraduate and hopefully ASU Strike can permit you to graduate uh, next year, as at when you should, you can get a certificate of expected graduation. So for me, I attended the University of Nigeria and such. Uh, you can get such. I, I got. I, you can get such documents from your faculty or from your department. You can get something indicating oh that you're going to graduate so so and so year. You can use it and apply. It's it's a it's a it's something that they can they can uh, they, that they can grant. So then you have your a copy of your official transcript. So you can get your transcript now. In Taiwan here, like okay, let me just use my own school. I don't know about other schools, but I know it's basically almost the same thing because most of the institution here is controlled. They are all under the Ministry of Education. In Taiwan here, you don't need your institution to send your transcript to the school. You can forward your transcript, and maybe if, for instance, I, I think we are not uh, people are not supposed to handle their transcript. I guess so, but. You can forward your transcript to uh, maybe where you work, or uh, maybe an office, or your your supervisor in your school. He can get your transcript for you, then hand it over to you. You scan it and use it for your application. So that document that you got, you can always use it to apply to any school here in Taiwan. You don't need to send so many transcripts. So you can. That means that you can apply to as many schools as you want here in Taiwan. So you don't need to pay a lot of money to uh, have your transcript sent. Unlike other countries where you you you'll be required to send your transcript to school one, you send your transcript to school two, and while you're doing that, you're paying the institution money to always send your transcripts to those schools. But here in Taiwan, you can get a copy of your transcript, scan it, and upload during your application. That same one that you scanned during your visa period. You can have it authenticated at the embassy and you come here with it. And it's not like they are going to take it. They are just going to take a copy of it. So it is very, very, very important that you uh, maximize this opportunity. So then proof of nationality with your in, with English name, date of birth. So this can be your, your birth certificate or but most importantly, it should be your international passport. So with that, you can, you can, you can apply then. English proficiency. Nigeria is fully covered. We are, we, we are, will I say, uh, we are always waived for English proficiency here in Taiwan. As long as you present an evidence indicating that your undergraduate studies or your secondary school studies or your master's and any, any of those studies were done in English, they know that we are English speaking country. So you don't need to write IELTS, 12L or anything, except maybe you want to still boost your opportunity of getting admission and uh, you can you can do that. So, but you don't need that. Most of us did not. I didn't write IELTS. You know, I didn't write 12L or anything. I just used a copy of a, a provision from the English proficiency uh, provision from my university indicating that I had my undergraduate in English and I put it there and that's it. So um, that's it. So other supporting documents. Now, what do I mean by other supporting documents? These are documents required by your separate fields. Now, the document required by masters in the School of Pharmacy may not be the document that is required by masters in public health. So it is very important that you also study and know what requirements are given. So in my school, they have an outlined platform to all these requirements. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you an instance using, um, I'm going to give you an instance using, um, let me check. Okay. Okay, so this is um, this is the brochure from my university. 
for master's programs in fall 2022. That's for those who applied last year. It is still valid. When I mean valid, I mean the requirements are the same. So not much will change. So if you can begin now to prepare your requirements or your, your, your the specific requirement for your program, then it is very, very important. So now I've talked about eligibility. So you have to be eligible to apply. So um, knowing the fact that so now, give it, let me use a, a kind of, let me use a kind of, um, let me use a specific program to give you an instance. Okay, now, so you see, program specific requirements. So if you are applying for, let's say, uh, okay, master's in a program in school of pharmacy, that's master's in pharmacy. These are the specific requirements. You have to write an SOP. You have to present your CV, the personal statement. Then you have to put up a PowerPoint file indicating your research plan. I have to be very frank with you. When I had applied, this requirement was not there. It was just your research plan. They didn't say you have to put it in a PowerPoint format. So now it takes you to be able to you know, develop a research plan, it's going to be PowerPoint, so you have to make it very, very short. Then you have to get two recommendation letters in English, uh, and you, and how it is done is this. Uh, when you are applying, you'll be needed to submit emails of the professors that you would want to give you recommendation letters. So supporting materials are optional and may include, you can get your, uh, if you want to write GRE, fine. If you have professional licenses to upload, fine. If you have publications, okay. If you have awards, okay. You can upload these ones under the supporting materials. But these one, two, three, four are required for this. So now let's check another program. Uh, okay, look at public health now. For public health, remember the personal statement is just personal statements here. The, you don't need to put up any slide. So you have to write statements of purpose, your resume, that's your CV and your personal statement, the recommendation letter. This one, as a Nigerian English professor, is waived. So you, you have to check other. Okay, applicants should provide proof of English for such as this. Uh, okay, applicants who have had formal education or work experience in an Anglophone country may provide attendance records as proof of English proficiency. So that is it. So your evaluation criteria is document review. So that means it is through your document that you submitted all the program specific requirements that you submitted that they will use to judge your admission. If you go back to pharmacy now, um, come back to pharmacy, what did you see? Interview is what they will use to judge. So when you submit all these applications or all your documents, you have to know exactly what you have done. Uh, you have to exactly know your interest, especially take notes what you have written in your statement of purpose, your personal statement, and your research plan. So that means how much you perform in your interview would determine if you get admission or not. But in the case of, uh, um, in the case of, uh, okay, let's look at nursing. Okay, see, nursing, your, the, the reviewing of your document takes 40%, but then your interview is 60%. So it all depends. So you have to know your program specific requirements. It is very, very important. So, um, like I said, all these things will be made available, but this is specifically for my school. For other schools, you can as well make your research and find out the uh, various uh, requirements. Also, these, these requirements are also in place for PhD. You have, you have PhD brochure, which you're going to also see in the document when I send it to you guys. So, um, so, you have to be able to know the program specific requirements. So, when all these things are ready, you apply. Some schools, I don't know, might require application fee for my school. You don't need application fee. Once you meet the, once you're eligible and you have everything it takes to apply, then you can go on and put up your application. Then once you, once you have, uh, when it is time, whether you got the scholarship 
or you didn't get the scholarship for my school as long as you are applying to Taipei Medical University you'll be given consideration for scholarship so I, I don't know but I don't know if it is possible but I think if there's an indication that you want to like train yourself or something I don't know if there's such platforms per se but basically as long as you're applying to the school you must be considered for a specific scholarship it could be the type A that you get or type B or type C. I know someone right now who will be coming for his masters this year. He initially he got the type initially got the type B scholarship. Is it type B? Yeah, type B scholarship or type C where his tuition is covered, but his uh, his um stipend was not covered for. So I, I don't know what happened, but I know I went to the secretary of the program and complained that oh this person might not be able to come because he doesn't have this thing. Uh, all of a sudden, they changed this program to type B, I mean type A scholarship. So, CTME is going to fund, give him full tuition as well as um, also give him um, full tuition as well as stipend. But at the same time, even if he wants to work outside despite this, he can as well get a work permit and get a job outside. But I think there are minimum number of hours you have to work. So that's that. So it 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 depends. So when or when you have finally uh, secured admission and probably secured a scholarship or finally secured admission and you want to commence for your visa. Now, uh, I, I I know everyone here, including uh, Good Luck and Ibrahim and everyone that has applied for visa through the Taiwan Embassy in Lagos had their experiences. So, but I'm not going to use that to discourage you because everybody's story is not the same. So, for the visa application, these are the various requirements for your visa application. You have to fill the application form, then you have to have, have your passport, then get your uh, this thing, passport size photos, then the health certificate. You are going to see the health certificate in one of the uh, this thing that I'm going to share. You have to use that and take it to a, a very a well-known hospital or a government is a hospital. They will assess you and fill that form. And uh, that is what you're going to use. If you get any other thing that is not that particular document, they will not accept it. So uh, you have to have your certificate of enrollment, which you get once you have been offered admission. And also your, okay, your diploma and your transcript. So now, all your all your academic credentials must be authenticated by the Ministry of Education for your academic documents and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at Abuja. In fact, whether you are coming to Taiwan or you're not coming to Taiwan, I am advising you, it is important that you have these documents authenticated. And the earlier you authenticate it, the better for you, so that it will not take you on a wedge when you actually need to submit such documents. What is authentication? Authentication is to say that your documents are original. So, you, for instance, your WAEC, your NECO, your anything academic, your transcript, you, you have to take it to the Ministry of Education. And I think also on my Facebook page, I wrote procedures on doing that, on how to have your documents authenticated. So, you, you have to have it authenticated when you when you authenticate that you take it to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they will also do their own authentication. You know how Nigeria is; they will they might not make it easier for you, but the earlier you you begin, the better for you. So that when it is time for you to go and submit for a visa application, you will not be running helter skelter to look for how to authenticate your documents. So the document that you can only authenticate within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is you, if you have to get a police character police character certificate, then you have to get, okay, this health certificate we're talking about, and some other documents, your bank statements, and etc. You have to have them authenticated at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, after which they will also be authenticated at the Taiwan Embassy in Lagos. With this, I think you, 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 you are fully covered. So then you prepare on, on coming to Taiwan and uh, that's basically it. Like it doesn't take uh, much. Then I'm going to uh, some. Yeah, I think that's basically all I can I can really really share right now. Except uh, 
um, my colleague, like um, like good luck. If he has something else to share with you, then fine, he can he can do that. Then we will now take up your questions uh, that you may have. Thank you very much. Hello, good luck. Okay. So please, before you you ask, you unmute yourself. Please try and um, and uh, indicate by raising your hands. Then you'll be called upon. Then you can uh, ask your question. So Yusuf, uh, your hands have been raised for a while now. Please, can you ask your question? Yusuf. Okay, Philip, you can you can go on. I'm going to drop Yusuf hands. Um, Philip, go on, ask your question, or mute yourself and ask your question, please. Philip, we can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Can you hear, can me, you now? hear me now? Yes, 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 yeah, we can hear you. Okay. All right, All right, right great. great. Um, good morning, good morning for giving me this opportunity. Um, my name, my is, name is Philip. Philip. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately for me, um, um, I, had I had an admission this year. year. That's one, one of the university called, called the, um, a Tai Chi University. Okay, Tai Chi University. But, um, yes. yes. But the issue is, I, I think, think uh, we didn't get this kind of information, information earlier. earlier. So, so uh, um, we didn't we get, get the, the scholarship. Maybe you do to two or three, three reasons during the interview. They asked me whether, whether um, I'm very, I'm very happy, happy for half scholarship, scholarship, and I told them no. I need full scholarship, scholarship because, because I told them that that is the reality on the ground, and, and there's no need for me to lie. So I don't, so don't know, know the reason why I didn't get the scholarship. The scholarship. So, my so my question is: Is it good for you to tell them the truth, or you have to lie before maybe they will believe you? Before they will do what? Before they, Before they will believe you. Well, uh, for me, I, I feel like when it comes to things that have to do with money, I am always very, very frank. Okay? I'm always very frank. But at the same time, you have to be diplomatic in your being frank. For instance, if they have, you, you've been offered admission and you've been offered a kind of scholarship, right? Sure. sure. So now the only difference is that your scholarship is not full, but at the same time, you like we said, you have the opportunity to even work outside. In fact, do you know that some people that work outside in terms no, of no, no, wait, 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 please, please, the, the question was, was yeah. the man, the man asked, asked me if I would be much interested for half, half scholarship. scholarship, and I said, and no. I said no. Okay, they asked you if that you're was, if you will be interested in half scholarship. Sure, sure. I I think this depends on you because if I were in your shoes, knowing the fact that um, if I have done my 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 research properly. And I'm aware that I can have the opportunity of getting a, a working permit and also knowing the hours that I'm supposed to work and how much I'm going to earn that I will use to take care of my my stipend. I if I would basically say yeah that in as much as I want I would want a fully funded scholarship, that if it's uh, if I'm offered a, a, a partial scholarship, I, I might I might be able to um, succeed in 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 my studies, but it's going to be very difficult for me. So I'll definitely need another alternative of uh, of of source of funding. So that's basically what I'll answer. But that is you being frank, not you lying, because you're you are telling them that you would love to be given a fully funded scholarship. But if they give you a partial scholarship, it's not a problem. You can come and study because you really want to study, but it's going to affect you. Mm. All, right. All right. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, you can drop your hands now, Philip. Or do you have any questions? <laughs> oh, oh, I think, I think um, 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 last, last year, year too, um, something, something happened to one of the ladies in Ghana who also had, also had um, admission. admission. But actually, um, she, um, told she told me that, me that um, 
um, um, she, she went, went through, through all the, the, the procedures. Are you from Ghana? Um, yes, I'm yes, from, I'm from Ghana. Ghana. Okay, okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, um, but um, later, later uh, she, was uh, she was denied, denied of uh, um, Yes, a lot of and things, I, a lot of things, let me cut you short, a lot of things happened last year. A lot of things happened last year. Um, I cannot give you reasons why such things happened. But I, I just think it's about the diplomatic uh, challenges that exist. But a lot of things happen. But at the same time, uh, some people have been successful in their visa application. If I, as I'm speaking with you, a friend of mine whom I advised to apply to TME, he was offered a Type C scholarship, meaning his tuition will be covered. So he, he applied for... Uh, he went to apply for visa a few weeks back, and the lady there in Nigeria, who is there, he, she is the one that gives people tough time, okay? So the lady there uh, tried giving him tough time, but when I explained to him about the situation, most embassies you go in Nigeria, because of the names we've already created for ourselves internationally, ah, Omo, you know they work, oh. they try to make it very difficult for you. If you go to German embassy, I've had colleagues who went to German embassy, and they can, they can even throw you out. Like, I mean, they will take security and throw you out. Just for, be, maybe they can ask you, write something, and you made a mistake. So, I don't know. We, it's just the names we've created. And I, I think the when we start making changes towards this, and they begin to see us uh, as being sincere. Like, here in Taiwan, these guys are very, very sincere. I'm. I've left this. My I've left my phone, eh, in a very big public place. And I just remembered after like thirty minutes. Oh, where did I drop my phone? I went back there. It is still. It was still there. They don't need it. You can't drop an iPhone in Nigeria in a public place. I'm not saying we don't have good people. We do. But you can't try it in Nigeria in a public place. Let's say I enter University of Nigeria now and I mistakenly drop my iPhone and I leave it for five minutes. You're not, you're not going to see. Even when the person picks it up, the person will start bargaining with you how much you're going to pay to get your phone back. But here, anything you lose, somebody has, I think it was Cooper, he, the guy who, the guy from US, he told me once that a, a, a colleague of his dropped his bag in, in, in the train station. Just, you know, some people can just you be facing, facing a lot of challenges and you just, you know, yeah, sure. make mistakes. So, and in the on top of the bag, he, his wallet was there. He had everything. Even when, when he remembered and went there the following day, everything was still there. Everything intact. You don't do that in our country. So now, all these things might be the reasons why we are facing the kind of challenges we are facing at the embassy. But still, I believe these things are individualistic. The lady there, her name is Rita, is very terrible, I must say. But at the same time, I think, I wouldn't say I know her formula. But right now, everybody that I've known that have succeeded in going through her and succeeding in coming to Taiwan, you just have to keep calm. When, you know, most times when we go to embassies, knowing that all your documents are okay and complete, you know you have like this prestige. You know you're right. If you ever give out that attitude, you remember that, you know, like when somebody wants to, when somebody wants to use less an opportunity that you have and the person has nothing to lose, you know what people can do. But, sure. but when, when you, you know the importance of what you're trying to do, so why not keep calm and take it easily? A lot of people had issues with Rita because of sometimes, I'm not saying Rita is good, the lady there. I'm not saying she's good. So don't put me wrong. But she, I, I feel like one of the best methods to work with her or trying to bypass her is to stay calm and not try to argue with her or anything. Because you, have, you must have to pass through her before you get to the Taiwanese or even get to have your interview. So that, that's all I can say, my brother. Okay. Okay. Uh, my uh, next question, question is, is um, 
for my, my research, I realized, I realized that most of the, of the uh, uh, Taiwan, Taiwan universities um, uh, programs, uh, programs focus on science, science and what I, what I did in school was, was um, uh, DA. DA. What? So at times so I, I found it. I said, in hey, my, my research, I've realized that most of the. I heard what you said. You said what you did in your school is what? BA. BA. That's that bachelor, not in, science. not in science. Not what? Not in science. Okay, bachelor not of science. Not in arts. science. Yes. Not in yes. science. Okay? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So based so on that, that uh, I find it uh, much difficult to get, to get uh, most, most of the program, program that, that I want to offer at um, Taiwan. You know, like I said, these things are things that you have to like it's like an assignment to yourself so you might you might not see schools that are offering your programs more of them but that doesn't mean that they don't exist they do but it takes you to make such discoveries you have to do you have to take it as an assignment to cite everything is on the internet you just need to calm down take it sometimes you like some of the things I presented to you, you see that these are things that are outlined. They, they, it's not like all of them are found in a database. You just have to take it one by one. You write the name of the school. You write the application deadline, when it is starting, when it is ending. Stuff like that. It will aid you to know when to apply and when to uh, know that it is deadline. So it is you that needs to seek for such schools. There are schools here in Taiwan that offer a lot of Courses in arts. It just depends on you to find them out. Like my school, Taipei Medical University, is purely science. But we still have courses that do, that deal on, um, uh, I think, will I say uh, arts or what? Uh, I wouldn't say art, but let me just check um, the title. The title is. Uh -huh. We have like colleges of humanities and social sciences. Are you seeing it? So now, these are social sciences. You could check up some of the these colleges of uh, this thing I just mentioned and social sciences and check. Sometimes also, the course you're looking for might not be in the actual faculty you're, you, you think you have always known it to be. You, in Nigeria, or in Nigeria, you might find uh, uh, pharmacy, pharmacy is a faculty in most Nigerian schools. But you might come here now and you see pharmacy under the School of Medicine or even the School of Pure Sciences. So it is you that needs to do that research. So I think we'll have to like move on to someone else, Philip. All right. All right. Thank you very much. And I would much appreciate if you share the what you Yeah, definitely. I'm going to share all. I'm going to share all the documents. I, I, I should have really created a platform for you to, you know, fill up at all. But I'll, I'll figure, all right, all I'll right. figure out a way on how to do that before the end. Just don't leave uh, before the end of this. Uh, this thing, I'll share the link and all. So thank you very much, Philip. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mohammed, Mohammed, please, you're up next. Mohammed, is it Mohammed or Kabir? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mohammed yeah, Kabir. Okay, okay, you're welcome. Uh, uh, Rafael. This is a mind-blowing mind -blowing opportunity for many of us. Thank you so um, much. I'm, 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 I'm preparing, preparing to, to leave. And, um, and um, like part, like of, the part process, of the process um, um, my school, my school I've, seen I've seen where you mentioned SOP, SOP and personal, and personal statements. statements. Yeah. I don't know, I don't if, know if you can share the light for, for, for us. I'm considering Taiwan possibly for PhD. Okay. Uh, most likely. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Um, good luck. I don't know if you if you can help me on this aspect, or should I? Because I feel like you have more experience on that. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, about the about the SOP and the personal statement. Well, um, I, I, I just want to. to I just want to, I just say, want to say that. that When you, when you want to write something, something like this, like this in, in Taiwan, Taiwan generally, because, because Taiwan, Taiwan you're actually copying exactly, exactly what you, the format, format you have in the US here. here. And, um, and, um, and, um, and, um, you know, when you want, when you want to write, write the personal statement, personal, personal statements, statements 
at least the ones I've written, uh, I actually wrote um, the school in the University of Illinois, actually requires that I write a personal statement and uh, a statement of purpose. I mean, in the same application uh, uh, on a portfolio that I had to submit. So the statement of purpose, basically, I had to talk about my research. That's basically like what I'm even coming to do, why I'm even interested in the program. You know, these are like, I mean, it's just like a statement of purpose. So, you know, in the beginning, I always think that there is actually no difference between the two. But until I applied for the PhD in Illinois, and they asked both questions in one application. Uh, format. But then what, then I, did what I did was that, was that in, in the statement of purpose, I just explained why I'm interested in the course, um, the, um, the research area I'm interested, interested in, what I want, what I want to do, and all. And all. And then, and then for my personal statement, statement I actually reflected, reflected on how my personal, my personal background, background is influencing the choice of this course. course. Do you understand what, what I mean? So, so for, for, for I have, I have to talk about how my upbringing, my, upbringing, my, my, you know, my experiences, experiences personal, personal experiences now, because, because they probably want to get to know you in person. person. Like, what, like kind what kind of person are you? What is your story? Right? right? What's, what's your story? Your story? Did, you did you come from, from um, um, you know, how, how difficult was it for you to finish your bachelor's degree and now you finished? And then what is the story behind the whole motivation you are showing? I understand. So that's basically. I, I, I wrote myself, for myself and, and I got the admission. So, so it's still, it's still um, a little bit confusing for some of us who are from, um, we, are um, not we are not like, like I don't know, um, like original, like original native, native English speakers. It's still, it's still confusing, confusing for us. For us. But then, but then I, think I think when you are faced with those kind of things, for some of people, just, just why, are you, why, are you, why, are you, why are you applying for the course? And then, and then for a personal statement, you can just reflect on your own personal experiences and how it's influencing your choice of the course. It might, it might overlap, overlap at some point. point. The point you're going to make might overlap, overlap, but it doesn't really make any difference, actually. Okay, so... Hello? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. But I'm really, really thank you so much for this explanation. I think I got a bit um, more clear now. But I'm trying to okay for statement, personal statement. Can we just focus on the research and while the SOP cover virtually everything? For personal statement, we we can we, 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 we cover on our personal and uh, issues and then reflect it to the research. I don't know if that can stand. You know, what I, you know what I want to say, say actually, actually, sorry, what, what, I want, what, I want, what I want to say is this, unless, unless you have a situation where, where you are asked, you are asked those, those to write, to write those both documents, documents in one, in one application packet, like, like, I mean, I mean when I apply to the I only wrote the statement of purpose, I don't know about it, I only wrote the statement of purpose, and that statement of purpose I wrote, I needed my personal background, and, and information for the like, I had to write a list of stuff. So, unless, so, unless you have been asked to write those three things, things sometimes it's not even possible to have you writing, you writing those two things. It's just not very your location. But if you have to write the statement of sometimes, sometimes I always advise people to just kind of write, 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 write everything, like write everything, and tell it to the most people why you are applying for the course. And also, and also one thing, thing is, is, is especially when you are writing for those motivations here, uh, uh, for, for Taiwan, Taiwan. You, you don't need to write, to write too much, too many because things, because they don't, they don't really get any fragmented grammar, they don't really get, really get it. So just, so just write a page or a page and a half, half there's something that, that, you know, you know, you know that simple, simple English, as simple as possible. Maybe when you apply to the US, you can write complex things. So you just write very simple things and they just get it. This is what you want to do and that's all. That's very simple. You know, you know, basically, basically like, 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 like Raphael has mentioned, you are accepting, you are accepting your acceptance into, into the program does not even lie, especially for time, does not even lie in the statement of purpose right. they are writing. It's in the interview. interview. So they just, so they just, they just take your documents and then, and then you come in the interview and say whatever you want to so say. So the statement of purpose is just just a formality, just write, just write something. But then in the interview, you have to present yourself very well and tell them why you really want the course. That's what I can say about that. Well, okay, for, for me, in my program, I wrote both statements of purpose and personal statement. 
Now, for my SOP, I wrote a kind of uh, the motivation behind my reason to study, uh, um, um, uh, for me to study a master's in pharmacy. That is what I wrote, my motivation. So therein, I shared about my my inspiration behind that. You can start up, that's the one you start up with, a kind of the whole story. You could be someone who really wants to solve a problem in cancer, and you have like an inspirational story behind that. You could just commence. Then you could talk about what you've, um, you could talk about along the line that you could share share your educational background and what you've done. But in my personal statement, what I wrote was just, uh, I wrote a kind of um, my, 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 my research, my personal research background. That was what I shared in my personal statement. I shared my personal research background and what I've done. So that basically that's it. Then in my SOP, I mentioned why I want to study in TMU. Why Taiwan? Are you getting it? These are the things I talked about in my SOP. I talked about my personal inspiration to want to study a, a master's in pharmacy. I spoke about my experience so far, as well as um, I now mentioned about my why I want to study in TMU, why I want to study in Taiwan. Who would I want to work with when I come to Taiwan? A professor, whose professor, which professor am I going to? Am I interested in working in his lab? Then for that of the personal statements, I basically just expanded on my personal research experience. Sorry, my personal research experience. So that, that is it. So uh, I want to also point out that some of these requirements are individualistic. What do I mean? It depends on the school you're applying to or even the program. That's why I say program-specific requirements. So uh, that is, I think that's what we can say really about the personal statements and their SOP. Uh, thank you very much. If you go out there, in, if you go to Twitter, there are lots of samples of personal statements and SOP that you can get out there. So Yusuf, over to you. You've been raising your hand a long time. Okay. okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you be more audible? We are not. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. I'm very much Hello, Yusuf. We can't. Your voice is very, very low. Is it just me or or what? Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more audible now. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, I want to talk. I want to talk about scholarship opportunities for medicine. For what? For medicine. Um, is it that it's more the national national national? What did you say? I mean, I mean, uh, I want to know, I want to ask more questions. I want to ask questions regarding the scholarship opportunities. Uh, uh, the graduate studies for international African. Okay, go on. Uh, what, are uh, what are the requirements? The basic requirements, the, the eligibility. But we just discussed about that. Shared for slide, slide on. on. Uh, I just, uh, want, I just to want to know about, about that process. processes. That's what I'm saying, Yusuf. We we did share such, unless you didn't join on time. Of which, right now, I've already shared a Google Drive uh, link on the comment section. You can go there and have access to some of the files there we have already shared the uh, we've talked about the eligibility and the application procedures and application requirements yes i, yes, think, I that think that you have shared, you have shared it in the drive, drive. Okay. So what, so I mean, what i mean is no more no more no what are the chances of the possibility of getting scholarship in medicine like in some other countries when you see they said uh they don't offer, they don't offer the medical, the medical courses, courses to foreign, 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 to okay, I, 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 I do not know the answer to your question on terms of uh, personally studying medicine for undergraduates. Okay, good luck. I, I see you're raising your hands. Maybe you want to answer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, for medicine, for medicine here, here, the medicine is. I think he's asking for undergraduates, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. For undergraduate, for undergraduate med medicine, right? right? 
Yeah, so, yeah, here, so here, the medicine, the medicine is, is basically restricted to local. Now, the now, reason why, the reason why it is that way is because the course, course is even taught in Chinese. Like, mm. it's, it's basically, basically Chinese. Chinese. So, so, and I think and that, I think that um, um, a foreigner, a foreigner would, not, would, not, would not be able to cope. You know, because, because you don't have the, the, the proficiency. In Chinese yeah. to do that. So that is so why, that is why I here have I have not seen any foreigner who who does that. But even if if yeah, even if you check, yeah, if you check, check the, the, the list of the programs, programs that scholarship scholarship will support, I don't think there is anywhere you know you see But you can actually do medicine in the masters, the PhD. Yeah, yeah. I think our school has 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 what do you call it? We have a we have a program like that. Like that. I've somebody seen somebody in biochemistry who did the master's program in medicine. So there's also, so there's also an international program, PhD program, program, PhD program in medicine, also here uh, in, our in our school. So you can actually, you can actually do it as master's, master's and PhD, but for undergraduate, uh, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very much. All right. Uh, do you still have question, Yusuf? Sure. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Godwin, you're next. Godwin Equeme. Godwin Equeme. Okay, let's go to Mary Adebayo. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello. Okay, Godwin. Hello. Okay, Godwin, you're here. Okay, we're, we're hearing you. Alfred, thank you very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate this opportunity to share your uh, your experiences to us. And my question is, I had a degree in electronics and computer engineering, and it has lasted over ten years. I don't know if they get admit students based on the duration of your degree or. Uh, as, uh, much as, as much as your degree have lasted, lasted can, can you be admitted? And also, and also uh, 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 is, is there any specification for academic, academic excellence? Because I had two, two, basically 3.34 to two degree. Uh, uh, would they consider your, your GP before you, before you get admission for a scholarship? For a scholarship? Um, okay, thank uh, you very uh, much, Godwin. Basically, almost, okay. almost every institution does certain considerations. But at the same time, I'm always a fan of telling people not to undermine because they did not to undermine themselves because they did poorly or they didn't do as they expected in their previous studies. Now you have to too. That is not a limitation. To me, that is not a limitation. Okay? And the number of years I have not seen anywhere in the in the applications. Unless you're talking about scholarship, I don't know. Even at the scholarship, I've not seen restriction in terms of number of times between when you finish your undergraduate and when you want to commence postgraduate. But I, I feel there is no limitation to, to education. And Taiwan is a diplomatic country and they practice that. There is not do, uh, is not say and not do like the way we do in Nigeria. If they say we are diplomatic, yes. they are diplomatic. So I don't think they are going to restrict you from applying for masters because you've been you it's been long, you did your undergraduate. And I don't think if they are going to consider like we mentioned, some schools do not actually judge you. Not like they will not consider it, but they do not actually judge you because of your um, your documents that you submitted. When they get to have an interview with you. First of all, you have to submit an application. It is that application that will yes. give you leverage to be called upon for an interview. So that means even while submitting an application, you have to be able to write good uh, uh, recommend, like a good SOP or good um, personal statement. That will now give you leverage to be called for an interview. It is during that interview that you have to prove yourself. You understand? So it is that interview that you have to prove yourself that I deserve to be here. So don't restrict yourself. I, I always advocate this. Don't restrict. I've seen people who went to US with polytechnic certificates. Polytechnic. I'm not undermining polytechnic. I'm sorry. But we all know what the outcome is after attending polytechnics. But people have gotten opportunities and yes. traveled to the US. 
So how much more for the fact that you have a degree? So that is what I can say. So don't undermine yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So Mary Adebayo. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mary. Good afternoon, good afternoon sir. sir. Hi, Mary. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you very for, much this for this opportunity, sir. sir. My question, My question has, has been asked from Mr. Godwin. Okay. Do, okay. They Do they consider CGPA? Um, like, I graduated, like I graduated with second class, second class lower. lower. Okay. I, want I want to study public health. Okay. So, uh, Mary, uh, I've, already that, said, that? I've already said what I needed to say. But let me just buttress my point by saying it will not hurt you to put up an application. Did you hear me? Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, how, what, what, what am I going to use as an example? Um, president Obasanjo, former President Obasanjo, can never be Nigerian president if you put up an application. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so give put, put the application. No, there's no there's no harm in that. There's no harm in trying. So it's not about you getting a two two or a two one or so. There are cases where. Uh, there are cases where people have had first class and yet they are not able to get a particular opportunity. But somebody that had 2-2 two -two will get that same opportunity. So that is why we are telling you to make sure that you put an effort towards your application requirements as well as your interview. Let me tell you, you might somebody might go to school and get a first class. But that person may not be able to verbally ex express what it means to have studied that profession. Do you understand? Why somebody who had two yes, two, yes, why, had so, why somebody who had two two can, can wonderfully tell you what it means to have studied that profession? So, uh, and this place, abroad is a place where you're not judged by your results. You're judged by your skills. And what you can do. So there's no harm in trying. Thank, so Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. Um, we have Chisom Neoma. Neoma. Hello. Hello. Good evening, good evening everyone. everyone. Yeah. Good, good afternoon. Yeah. Um, my um, question, my question is: Thank you for. Thank you for uh, first of all, let me thank you for, thank you for this opportunity. Trust me. Trust me. In terms, of in terms of application, I never even considered that one, but knowing that there are opportunities, there's really, there's really uh, mind, -blowing. Uh, mind blowing. Uh, my question, uh, my is, question is, the first question, the question is, is, you talked about the research the plan. plan. Yeah. Um, how do, how you, do you go about, go about getting, getting your research, research plan together? together? Um, what, um, what is what makes up, what your, makes research up your research plan? plan? And, and is, it, do you do you indicate, indicate interest maybe if you want to specialize in cardiology or cancer or oncology? Do you just do you reach out to your supervisor to the say I'm interested in this place? Then you guys come up with the topic together, together or, or are you going to do that on your, do that own, on your own? Then present your supervisor so that this is what you're interested in. So okay, um, I, I, good luck. You throw more light on this, but let me say what I what I know. Um, now in terms of a research plan. Um, you just have to, do you have an idea, something you're currently thinking about? Especially for those, oh, yeah, whether, oh, whether yeah. arts or science, you have to have an idea. One good thing about Taiwan is that you don't necessarily need to get a supervisor before you apply for your master's or PhD. You don't. Okay. Okay. Do you understand? You don't necessarily need to yeah, get yeah. a supervisor before you apply for your master's or PhD. That is one good thing here. So, why they are asking you about your research plan is to know what have you been brainstorming on. As someone who wants to go into studying, uh, who wants to go into a postgraduate program, you don't just have to just enter postgraduate program without actually having something you're, you're ruminating on. I think every average person should have something they are thinking about, what they want to do in that their field. You can't just start up a master's program without having a purpose. Unless you just want, unless you're telling yourself, I just want to get a master's. Uh, which is not right. So you have to be very, very, very specific about what you want. So if you know that, then you can put up a... Remember, like, the slide I showed. In my school, in my program, pharmacy, they said, 
a slideshow, a, a slide, uh, a PowerPoint. So it's just for you to itemize maybe something you might want to do, an interest you have. And um, another this thing I'm going to give you is insight is, for instance, if you're in the sciences and you have a particular uh, uh, experiment you want to perform, if the school has the equipment, for instance, in pharmacy, we've got mass spec, in not just in pharmacy, in, in, in TMU, we have mass spec, we have NMR machine, we have about three or four NMR machines. So if there are experiments that you want to perform that will need NMR machine, and you can cite that during your, your research plan, that one of the reasons for you to, I mean, you can cite that in your research plan or indicate the use of that equipment. That will indicate that, oh, this person has done her research properly. She's not just coming to do a research in, in, in TMU, but she knows that we have what it takes to do the research. So, but but if you go and say, let's say, for instance, you have, you say, maybe, I don't know the experiments are my kids, but you have a, an experiment you want to do, but maybe TMU does not have the equipment. You know, that's not feasible. Then you can make it feasible by talking about collaboration. So... That's basically what I can say. Number one, it is not a requirement for you to get a supervisor here in Taiwan before you come for your master's or PhD. But it is important. I think I mentioned it in one of the documents you would see. I said it is important. If you can reach out, it is important. Because you never can tell where it's going to be helpful. But it is not a requirement. As you can see, when, when okay, I showed okay. you the requirement for homework, did you see where they say get a supervisor? If they wanted you to get a supervisor, they would have told you. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. All right. uh, good luck. Do you have anything to share? Yeah, I just, yeah, I just wanted to uh, um, also add that. I mean, I mean basically, what the research plan is like, sometimes when people ask to write a research plan, they probably be thinking about uh, how to write one big research paper or something. I mean, like when I came here, uh, my intention actually, because I told you my background is in medical imaging, my intention was oh, I need to um, learn how to design contrast agents using nanoparticles. So there is luckily there is a um, um, School of Nanomedicine and Medical Engineering here. Yeah. So that was like, that was like basically what I wrote in my in my in my, in my, in my research plan. I want to learn um, the basics of nanotechnology and how you can use this to do this. So I didn't have to write like an elaborate uh, research and all that. In fact, um, it was like when I started the master's program that my real thesis, my final thesis, was decided on. So you know you're not expected to know or yeah. So I think you just have an information. Just yeah, yeah. Let them just see that you have an idea of what you are going to do. You know, that's that's all. That's all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Chisum. Uh. Okay. Um. Abdullahi. Abdullahi. Habibu. Sir. Sir. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi. Good day. Yeah. Uh, good day. Thank, uh, good day. You, thank you very much, much for this interesting program, program with Tarapel and good luck. I'm very, I'm very happy to be, part to be part of it. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, uh, uh, please, what, what I please, can... please, before you proceed with your, uh, your, this thing, your question, sorry uh, for cutting you short. Uh, for, the, for the person that asked okay. how were international students treated during COVID-19, uh, I, I, I didn't get your question, but if they weren't treated as they, they treated international students in China, or not even in international students in China, but as you heard that they treated people in China, they weren't treated that way. Everybody, everybody, Taiwan is diplomatic and everybody is considered human. If anybody becomes a racist, then it is an individual racism. And that is how I see it. So if you come to Taiwan and somebody does an attitude that indicates the person is a racist, Take that person to be a racist and not Taiwan to be a racist country. Because here, these people are very nice. So, thank you. So, Abby, we continue, please. Okay, thank, okay, you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, please, uh, please, I just have a little question about the PHB application. Because this webinar has served like a moral booster to me because of what you and Mr. Goodluck just expressed about Taiwan. 
to say me and hearing it for the first time that it's a diplomatic country so the way you just explain now so i'm happy to hear that that, uh, that uh, let me go to my, go to my question directly. Uh, my, uh, my question is this, is, uh, that, like, that like I'm not working in working academia, in academia and, uh, and uh, I obtain a bachelor's degree in art in, in library and information science. science. Okay. And master's, and master's degree, degree and master's degree, degree in information, in information management. management. So, so I had a little journal. Uh, uh, publication. Uh, publication. So, so I don't know, I don't know whether they are, they are taking, taking more serious on the people with, people with the higher volume, higher volume, volume of, publication of publication to get the PhD admission. Or like me, like me because, because I'm not working, working in academia, academia whether, I whether I can apply for PhD with, PhD with two, two or three international, international, international journal publications, whether I can be accepted. Okay. Um. You. Okay, you already have a publication. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay. Um, I, I, what I would say is still, like, the response to this is almost like what I've answered for, I mean, what Good Luck has said and as well as the previous questions. You don't need to have, like, this yes. large... What they do here is purely research. Like... When I was coming to Taiwan, I was coming with an interest because I have a background in computer-aided drug design from Nigeria. And I've been doing that since 2015 or 2016. I was coming here with the interest that I was going to continue. That was even what I wrote in my SOP. But when I got here, I, I got into the field of uh, organic synthesis. Now, we do synthesis in Nigeria quite all right. As an undergraduate, I was involved in synthesis of some, of some sort. But when it comes to the real synthesis, that is what I am doing right now. I, I, I must say that I, I find it very interesting because it's as if it was replanned, that my plan was replanned to still favor me because having the idea of computational chemistry and having the idea of um, organic synthesis will go a long way to aid my professional career. I will be better than somebody who is just having the computational, uh, computer-aided drug design knowledge. So now, you don't need to have large publications for you to apply for your PhD. The guy I told you that currently he applied for his visa yesterday, at this, his, his application was accepted. We're just waiting for him to get his visa and all. Now, he just had about three, three or four publications or so. So the major thing here is your interview. If you check that, if you check, like if you go for T, if you go to the TMU folder in the this thing I shared, you will see the you will see the brochure for PhD. Check it. You will not see anywhere where requirement for publications are mentioned. So if you have any, then it is like a bonus. It is among the addendum. But the most important thing is that you have to be able to state in your SOP your interest. If there's personal statement, if there's a research plan, but you have to do very well at, uh, during the course of the interview or during the course of your, depending on what is used to judge your the profession you're trying to go into. So I don't know if I was able to answer your question, but you don't need to have large publications. They will not use it as criteria to judge you. It is your ability to have the skills or your ability to... Even, in fact, if you're coming to Taiwan for your PhD, I think you should just try and relinquish some of the things you know back home because you're going to have a very big transformation in research knowledge. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Well, well answered. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. I really appreciate right. it. Thank you very much, Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yes, so, any other person? Okay. Um, okay. Um, Tamali. Hello, Tamani. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Good day. I'm from Uganda. Oh. Wow. Yes. Uh, I have a lot of Ugandan friends here, yes. by the way. Really? 
Really? Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of you got it. Nice. You say? I would love I would love to. I would love I would to love join, to join you guys there for sure. sure. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I have been trying, have been trying to apply to for fellowship, scholarships, and centers. Been four years, four years down, down the road for sure. I don't get it. I am so, I am so devastated. Yes, I want Yet to. I want to let father my, father my education. education. I did. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, but I, yeah, but I, I did battle of science in. Uh, like population, like population yes, studies from, from uh, Makere University. Wow, and a very good uh, university. I want to do master's. Yes, I, I want to want do masters, to do masters in, in like, a, like a public health. Public health okay. Eh? But what, but I, have what been, I have been applying, applying whatever I have, whatever been, I have applying, been applying, I don't get, I don't the, get the chance. I don't know what, don't know what the is the problem with my application. With my application. I, need I need to be supported. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Tamali. Um, uh, I'm sorry about the fact that you've not been getting your this thing, but I understand the frustration. I'm serious. Even though um, I, I I wouldn't say that I spent such amount of time put up, putting up applications, but I understand what it means to get rejection. Every one of us here that are interested in furthering their studies abroad have gotten rejections. So even good luck, Seth. Now, <laughs> so everybody has gotten rejection. So. Nobody is nobody is immune to rejections. Okay, so but um, but I understand that yours is taking time. So maybe maybe it could just be maybe your application packages, or also it could be the the people you're competing with. It depends. For me, I don't masters in in public health is not really something that should be a big deal. But right now there is a kind of um, a kind of inflow of people's interest towards public health. So that means you're really having a lot of people you're competing with. So you have to make your application very very strong. So maybe uh, sorry. So if you want your application looked into, then fine. That is what most of us do. Even the best of the best would want someone to look at the application before they send it out. So if you want us to, or some of us here, to look at your applications before you submit, then fine. Uh, I could do that for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, um, I also want to say that one of the reasons, of the reasons why, why people take a lot of time is because we... we um, it depends, on the, it depends on the pool of competition you are, you are, you, are, you, are, you know, it's just like, it's just like, like someone like, someone, like something like, like Erasmus is a very competitive, very competitive scholarship, to tell the truth, in a whole country, country they just pick two, three or four, you know, you know? so, when you, so when you are in that pool of competition, and you don't really, don't really have very strong um, applications, um, applications, you might end up being rejected, exactly. so that's why we are trying advocating for Taiwan, because here you are not, I mean, you're just going to apply to a school program, and you are not even like in the kind of Competition like tool, like and the more schools, right? and so, the more schools you apply to, the more opportunities you are. And Taiwan has a lot of that. schools. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you don't even, even pay application fees. That's like, like another good thing about, 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 about it. So if you are really, really serious, you can make close to thirty applications. And, and you might get like <laughs> almost ten, ten admissions. Exactly. Depending on your applications, um, how packaged it is, anyway. So we're not trying to undermine. The Taiwan ability to uh, give you admission. No, uh, actually, people get rejections here, so don't look at it as oh, maybe I'll just throw in an application and I'll get it. Rejections, people get rejections. So, so um, okay, Ekemini, okay, Ekemini, what's your question? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can mean, I think everyone Hello, can hear you. Can you hear? Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, so uh, much uh, Raph, and, Raph, and uh, good luck for, for this session. I I, I want to thank I you, you sincerely. I've attended sessions for the past few months, few months and, and I must confess, I must confess this, this one is just a top notch. It didn't take me minutes to convince that I'm at the right place. Thank you so much. I actually have just one question to ask because you said so much about everything I would have loved to ask. 
So my, so question, my is question is just about the resume, resume which is one of which the is one requirements I saw from the, from the TMU. And, um, and um, I, just want, I just want to know if there is any template or if there is anything we have to add to our resume to make it like strong, like strong and then, and then um, increase, our increase our chances exactly. of getting accepted to the university. The university. So that's, my question. that's my question. Oh, okay. Um, I think there is no uh, format to um, to to. There's no format to how you have to put up your CV. Okay, there's no format as to how you have to put up your CV. But it is important that you make it very concise. Uh, all right. So I think there is this. Um, what is this? Uh, German. There's this German. In, is it? Euro, Euro, what is it? Euro pass or what? Euro pass, Europass CV. Europass CV. Yeah, Euro pass CV. So Europass, that, Europass. yeah, that's okay. You can use, you can generate your CV using Euro pass. It's okay. But even if you cannot access okay. Euro pass, okay. you can just put up your, you know, what's in CV. You put your name. You put maybe your contact information. You put up maybe your affiliations or anything and your job, your work experiences. Tell all your email. Tell all your CV. Towards what your the application you're making, so if you if, if right. that is the best thing you can do, tell her it's towards the application you're making. So that's the what well, that's what I can say. So there's no specific requirement. If they were, one good thing about this foreign institution is this: if they want you to bring rice to Taiwan, they will tell you bring rice to Taiwan. They are not going to put it and hide it somewhere so that you can be able to figure it yourself. So, if they wanted you to have your CV in a particular format, they will tell you, outline your CV in a particular format. So, just make your CV concise and understandable. And I think that will do it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. All right. Thank you. Uh, Bakmos? Bakmos? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yusuf? Good. Good. Okay, okay, back most good yeah. evening as we came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good day. Thank you. Yes, um, yes, um thanks for, thanks for the platform for, for the opportunity. I do appreciate I've learned a lot. Um, although my, um, although my network, network is messing up, messing up breaking up like big, big time, yeah. However, however so, so I just want so to ask quickly for the um fonts. Will, will I need a, a block account, account for, yes, if like yes, how, like how much, how much should, I should I put in, 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 them? in them? If not, if, not, if I don't need a block account, account for a proof of funds, how much is required? How much is required? So, uh, I, so I can turn myself ahead, ahead and, and the likes. Okay, I I, I don't know. Um, okay, um, Habibu, my Facebook ID is, is, is written on that document where you have um, all the list of the institutions and the application deadline and the application uh, when the application will commence and when it will end. At the end of the document, you see my you see my social media stuff. Then as for uh, for that of Good Luck, um, I, I think uh, if if he wants to share Good Luck, please if you want to share your information, your social media uh, information, you can put it up here for them to access. Maybe the username or the link or so. So for your question, um, uh, Bakmos, regarding the the bank statements and all, please, uh, I do not have the exact information as to how much one is supposed to have in their accounts before they apply. But I, I think uh, that is being considered why at the embassy. So maybe you can check up the embassy through which you have to make applications and see if there's any such mention for uh, um, um, unless maybe when i'm done good luck could probably if he has an idea he would answer you but for me i do not have such knowledge i just know that you have even for those of us who had scholarships you we have to present bank statements for me i just presented my bank statement just to show you that i have a bank account not like there was even anything in it and so and i think it's just maybe official purposes so, but you have to have the bank bank statement authenticated at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, uh, good luck wants to say something. Maybe he has an answer for you. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so, 
the question uh, is really relevant. But like I want, like, I, I, came I came here with a student, student who got admitted into TCU, but he didn't have a scholarship. He came um, uh, uh, like, a like a self-funded um, student. Um, so I actually, I actually came here together with him, so I have a little experience on that. Now the thing is this: the school usually tell you how much you should have in the account. So I think the, the school told him to have um, like five thousand USD in the account. So um, and that was like like what he showed the embassy at the, at the, at the embassy. So usually, so usually this here, I think they usually work with institutions. So the institution will be the ones to decide. So since we are not get, giving you any funding, look at how much you should have as you know as funds. So I think the school asked him to have five thousand USD in the account in the account before he came. So um, but now I think it was in his second year he actually got a scholarship because he had to apply for one scholarship. In the school. But when he was coming he came self funded but then applied for a scholarship in the school in the second year and got it. so um I think uh, I think the minimum you can keep is 5,000 USD. I don't, know how, I don't know how much that is. But then, but then uh, it, also uh, it also depends on the school. Sometimes they can take it to 5,000. I know someone who also was asked to, to have um, account 2,000 also. He was asked to have 2,000 USD. But then the embassy, if you check the requirement, they do not actually specify what amount you are supposed to bring. So most times it's usually from the school. The school will tell you. And then if the school doesn't tell you anything, I also, I also see someone who the school did not mention anything, and the person just, just showed, I think he said what was in the account was 300,000 naira, it was in his account, so they just showed it there and you know, it was okay, so it just depends um, on, on you and on the school, you can always verify from the school and you'll get the admission in at, and they would tell you how much you should have. The embassy, I don't think the embassy has that information, because I have not seen it in any of the documents. Yeah. All right. So I, I, have so I, I have another question. If as the case may be, I don't know. Can I? Can I, I, know, can I yeah, yeah, you're free. Very much free. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I just want, I to, just want to confirm. If you put in an, application, put in an application, probably you've, probably gotten, you've appointment gotten an appointment, and you. Done your, done your interview at the embassy. So, what's the duration, what's the duration of the, uh, the um, results coming out? Is it two weeks, one month, or what was it like? It depends. Um, uh, but basically, if everything should go well, uh, two weeks is okay. Then sometimes uh, it depends. Like I said, it depends. So, about two weeks is okay. I've seen people who got their visa within two weeks and they proceeded. It just takes like four days for them to have your document authenticated then your visa will be applied and after two weeks you get your visa so but unless maybe something else comes up then you might probably not get it uh, within that period but i know that it will take a lot for your visa to be rejected as a student anyway oh, thank you very much thank you okay so uh is there anyone anyone else with question? Uh, Chidebere, you came very late. I I, I can I, I saw that you came very very late. So I I don't know. Do you have any question for us? I can't hear you. You're on mute. No question. For no question now. for now. No, for now, when we are almost ending, we even extended up to five minutes. <laughs> Okay. It's all right. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, Rafael. Yes, Rafael. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I have tried to the drive. The files are not open. The files are not what? The. They are not. They are not opening. From the link that. From the link that you're sharing. Yes. The. Uh, is there anybody else um, experiencing the, the challenge? I can't, I can't access it. It depends, it depends on the browser, on the browser you, you are you making use of. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because, because I, 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 was, I, was, I, I used, I used Google Chrome. Chrome. It, 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 it wasn't opening. And I used Phonics. Use Phonics. Phonics open it. Phonics browser, browser, browser will open it in your, your, your mobile, mobile phone. Or, 
Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me try again. Google Drive can open it as well. Okay, so does any other person have any question, please? Okay, so I think uh, uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank Good Luck because. Uh, sorry, I have, sorry, I have a question. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Can, yeah. Can, 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 can already has, has a master's master degree. Apply for a master's, master's degree. Sure. 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 No, the funny thing sure. is, uh, sure. um, who, who is asking? Damula. 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 Okay. 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 Okay, um, okay, okay. I'm trying to um, mute. Um, I, I, I can hear. Okay, okay, fine. All right, uh, Daminola. So yeah, you can apply for another master's degree if you have masters. Do remember, it all depends on you. I think uh, if you are applying for another master's degree, maybe it's just maybe you have you have a specific reason why you should. For me, I did masters in UNN before I came here for another master's and uh, i have my specific reason why i did that so it all depends on you so you can okay 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 thank you okay, okay backmos you still have question hello philip you have a question uh, Backmos, um, you have a question. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I just want to confirm. I've I, 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 I not seen what it sends to um, my email. I didn't send I your I email. I, I shared a link here. I shared a Google Drive link here where you can have access to all the documents, including the TM, the MOE scholarship, the, the language scholarship, and also the MOFA scholarship, and other documents that I've shared. Oh, okay. Okay. If it, if it, can you share it again? Because I cannot see. It I guess all. probably you left. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's you network left network. or joined again. But here is the link. I've shared it at the comment section. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll thank you. I'll right. Thank right. you. Okay. So, um, um, Philip, you you seem to have a question. Hello, Philip. Philip, your hands are raised. Um, your hand is raised. Oh, well, I say your palm is raised. <laughs> it's up. Okay, I guess um, Philip is not asking. Philip, you are you raised your hand. I can't hear you. Your 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 mute. Is, is it okay is, now? Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had it. You raised your hand. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. My, All right. Last, my last question is: is, um, uh, is it possible uh, is it to, to uh, apply for uh, maybe four or three, three scholarships scholarship for one two? One, two? Uh, no, it's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. You can't even right. you can't All even right. have Thank the you. government scholarship and the institution scholarship at the same time. So talk more of a different okay. government okay. scholarship. It's not possible. Just have to have one. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I cannot. I cannot access it. I think, it. I think it was my network. All right. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks for letting us. Uh, okay. So I think uh, basically this um, this uh, brings this um, will I say occasion to an end, and uh, I really appreciate. Uh, most of you guys for for coming and um, I, I want to use this opportunity to specifically thank good luck because when I, I shared with him it was early in the morning that I shared with him about what he was supposed to you know because I was also considering the fact that he's a very busy person so but he did even more and I want to really say that I I, I, I appreciate good luck thank you very much for for your contributions and everything i really really appreciate and i appreciate every one of you that uh, took your time to come in uh, come online spend your data and all and uh, my wish for you is that um let it not be in vain 
you have been here now you're here the next thing for you to do is to make this uh, possible by taking an action now application for 2023 for 2023 will commence very soon this is left for you to take it very serious and begin now to package your applications and what we want to hear is that by this time next year you're just planning to pack your bags and come to taiwan and you know one thing i want to share with you guys once you leave the veranda I, it, the whole idea is not about leaving okay it's about getting what you want but once you leave the, the the surrounding environment of nigeria so many opportunities will be open to you so many even those places you've been limited from going to you will see that you now have access to going there if not for covid being in taiwan gives you easy access to go to somewhere like um, thailand or vietnam or even japan or even china or so many places you can actually go to just for vacation or even for just fun just because you're in taiwan but it's just that covid spoiled everything and covid has spoiled everything not just for taiwan but for everyone so uh, i encourage you guys to put up your application you know so many people have been having heartaches and disappointment because of the rejections they've been getting by applying to somewhere like uh, somewhere in Europe and somewhere in the US and Canada and etc. So try and supplement your application by also applying to Taiwan. And I tell you, you would, you would enjoy it. So that's all. So if you have any question or anything, like I said, in one of the documents I shared uh, on the Google Drive, you have my more like my social media info you can always reach me anywhere i'm very much i'm always active so you can always reach me anywhere so and um, um i'm going to share my email with you guys right now just my unofficial email so you can always use that to send me any email in case you you want and it just indicates that you are from this um, from this program or this event yeah that's my unofficial email I, I didn't I don't want to share the official email I have but you can always reach me from this email so thank you very much then um, good luck please if in case they can they want to contact you and uh, maybe you can share something for them Hello, good luck. Hello, good luck. Okay, I guess. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So you have the details. So uh, by that, I think um, this was um, a fulfilling event. Thank you so much for coming. You take care. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us.